getting it because there is a part of me that my gut instinct almost makes me think this is the lowest common denominator. That is something that is adaptable to a book, to a printed book, and an e-book that could go either way, has the limitations of both conceivably. Mm. Yeah. And, the and, and the extended benefits of neither. In the last session we talked about, okay, printed books or e-books are not an either or. There's room in this space for both and you're not going to have a single format that's going to adapt to everything. So, if you have something that's both a printed book and an e-book, well, what you've described basically has, okay, here's a, here's, a, here's a physical volume with a barcode on it. That could just as easily be a credit card with a barcode on it that points to an electronic thing that has your annotations, that has all the benefits that an e-book brings, together with a paper printed manual that isn't updated easily, that doesn't do the annotations, that doesn't have the benefits of these other things. And I'm sort of wondering, how are you going to use this to maximize the benefits of each format rather than making them constrain each other? That's what we wanted to ask you. I mean, yeah. imagine a text. No, I have to you. Well, imagine you, <laughs> 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 The human body doesn't change. Number six. High, high quality print, print <laughs> of, of physical images is great for print media. But the research around, the learning around that is going to change. The research can be updated online and be always be up to date. The kind of basic print book could be enduring and persistent and kind of relatively unchanging for a few years. You know, so it's, it's, it, we change the model of textbooks. It's one way to think about. We need more scenarios. So if you have scenarios to throw at us, the the